Hello. Hello. Dania. And I'm also with Diana. Great. Uh, as usual, please give me just one minute to write down your names. So, uh, is this a septo writing? No, sorry. Um, reading, okay, yeah, got it. And I'm with uh, Tanya. And I also have Diana. And finally, we have Jefferson. Great. No, Jefferson is unavailable. So it will be just the three of us. Um, let me start recording the session. Not share my screen. And all right. So girls, thank you for coming. Um, this is a septo session and it has a focus on reading. So we're gonna do some reading from a web page that we got suggested from the leader of the online language community. However, I also want to talk to you uh, <clears throat> about something that will probably not will benefit you as much as uh, acquiring English, but it will benefit you uh, on getting a higher score on this exam. All right. Now let's start because I want to know if um, you already have some experience with uh, the reading sections of exams, whether it's the TOEFL, the SEPTO, or the IELTS. And I want to know how well do you do with reading when it comes to exams. So, uh, Diana, let's start with you, please. Okay, I try to read every day different subjects, different books, and I try to understand the main idea because uh, I can understand each word. Um, I I try to to ask me what is the uh, objective of the text. Mm -hmm. And um, this is all I try to read every day. And what do you read? Like the news or maybe a novel? I like different, uh, different subjects. I read books, the literature books or philosophy books or information or a blog in the internet, um, mm. a news sometimes. Do you have a particular place where you find those readings? For example, Facebook, or do you search them on your own? Um, Facebook, no, no much. I try to use the, the B, BBC or CNN. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Yeah, those are very available sources of, of reading information. That's good. Uh, thank you for that, Diana. Now, how about you, uh, Dania? Well, I don't consider myself an active reader. I used to read a lot more when I was younger, but now not so much. Um, but, but I'm a very frequent English practitioner, to say so. Like, I watch a lot of movies in English and especially like sometimes with english subtitles and i always like listen to the news and, and things like that i know that my reading comprehension is not that bad i think i got like 620 in my TOEFL, if i'm not mistaken so like it's a the TOEFL goes up to 110. 
Ah, the ITP. The ITP. Oh, um. ITP goes up to six hundred and seventy-seven. And is is that a a high score? I don't know about so, that exam. Six twenty. Uh, out of yes. out of what? In the maximum six hundred and seventy-seven. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. Um, sometimes I read like comics or or more kind of simple stories. Like the last books that I remember reading in English mm -hmm. was the Harry Potter collection because I specifically wanted to to get it in English, and, and I still have it. Or sometimes I listen to audiobooks in. In YouTube, I know that, that the Sherlock Holmes stories are, are for free, the, the audiobooks, so you can like play the video and listen to the, to the stories. Mm, that's very good. So, uh, you're not a very frequent reader, but uh, you do very well when it comes to, to reading in, in exams, right? Yeah, I have taken, um, I think, two to preparation courses for TOEFL. The first one was mm. in a school called, called uh, Colombo Americano in Cartagena. And then they prepared me there for the IBT. That's the mm -hmm. one that goes up to 120 points. And then a couple of years ago, I had a private teacher and he prepared me for the other TOEFL that goes up to 677 points. All right. That's very good. Thank you for letting us know that. Uh, but I wanted to know that because uh, much of the reading section of every exam requires us to put some ha some kind of um, habit in our lives. And well, if we want to get a high score in the reading section, I have some tips for you that you can probably incorporate within your daily uh, schedules. So let's start by talking about, uh, give me just one second. I, I'm okay, I still have you guys. Let me see if I'm still recording. Stop recording. Yeah. So about the septo exam. So the septo exam, uh, well, it has two sections. One is computed and the other one is assessed by a person. In the case of it, this university, if you take this F2 exam, is free. You have to ask the leader of your, um, how's it called, of your program to, to arrange a date where you can present the F2 exam. Well, remember, it's free. The, it has you know, two sections. We present it, sorry for interrupting. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, do you know how many times can we present the exam, like for free? Yeah, it's, uh, I think, two, once every two months. Oh. Do, do you know who's your leader? I think it's teacher Camilo. Uh, are you studying uh, Lile or Lile? Lile. Not sure about Lile. But uh, I'm gonna after this, I'm gonna give you the email also to you, Diana. Uh, I'm gonna give you the email of the um, person who's in charge of the septo, so you can arrange a date, right? So I have another uh, excuse, uh, another question. Sorry. Do you know if the scores that we get for septo can be used to homologue our English? Uh, I don't know really. I I guess it it could, but you know the thing is that in these programs we unfortunately have a lot of um, industrialism. So people don't want you to know some things because they also have another exam which is paid. But I know they have the septo exam which is free, and my advice is always take it first. Take it. And maybe if, if you take it and you have a good score, uh, take it as, as a homologation. I, I, I think is that the way you say that homologation? Yeah. But I'm not really sure. You can, you can ask that to your leader. Okay, However, take it. 
that's my best advice. All right. Now, uh, talking about the exam. So there are, has the exam has two sections. One is computed, and the other one is assessed by a teacher. The one that is computed is reading and um, listening. So because it's computed, you know that the scores are very, if I can say, are extremely accurate. If you get it something wrong, you cannot debate that because you're doing the exam with a computer. So the, the answers are right there. This is why reading is probably the most important out of the four skills that these exams assess. Now we also have the questions increase in complexity. So when you're starting the exam, question number one is very, very easy. If you get that right, uh, the next question is going to get harder. If you get that right, it, it's going to get even harder. Well, I say harder just to make this uh, more comprehensible, but it's not actually harder. I, I have myself taking this exam and it's not very difficult. Um, so for this, I say the question seems increasing complexity, not difficulty. Let's say if, if you got the very easy question right and after that you got a harder question but you answer answer it um, incorrectly in that case you will still still keep that level of uh, difficulty until you answer correctly so the exam changes depending on the answers that you give to the test uh, right here we have reading and listening are test based. So the septo itself is just reading and listening and it scores you from A1 to C1. It doesn't have C2. Uh, reading and listening are test based. That means it's computed. The computer is giving you the, the options and and the abstracts of the readings and the audio files if it's the audio section. So there you have that uh, in the case of the septo. Now, how do you get a better score in the reading section? My first and foremost, um, it's an advice that I give always, is start reading a novel. Some people like to read the news. There are very good sources. My mm, my favorite no news source is the New York Times. They write very good. However, they don't give you something uh, that you like to acquire when you read in his perspective. So immersing yourself into a reading. And when it comes to the septo, if you get the, the questions that are very easy right, the more complex questions required a lot of um, immersion. So how do you practice immersion? Read a novel. Uh, Dania set a very good example and is uh, she read Harry Potter. This is a very, very good novel. If, if, you, if this is the first time you get acquainted with a novel, start reading Harry Potter because it's about adventure most of you know the movies um, it's by an English writer so you will probably encounter very new vocabulary which is very good when it comes to the right re reading section of the septum so keep that in mind read a novel is that simple now uh, do you have I also any have novels that you personally recommend? Yes, I have. Uh, I actually have a drive that I was planning to share, but it didn't go so well. And well, one of them is 1984. Uh, is and by I forget his name. Oswell. Orwell. Yes. Orwell. Yes. 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 You got it. This is also uh, a novel where, where, where you can immerse yourself very, very well. Um, it 
has very various perspectives. First, it starts talking in, in the first uh, person, then you have the third person, and you also get a lot of vocabulary right there. Another book is uh, well, The Adventure of, of Sherlock Holmes by Conan Doyle. Not, not just stories, but I mean the novel. It's the compendium that is also very good. Um, and more recent, I also like Jordan Peterson. And he has uh, 12, 12 Rules for Life. And it's a very good novel, um, Jordan Peterson. At the end of the, the session, I'm going to share you also my um, drive so you can have access to the novels. Now, let's talk about the septo hacks. This was the, the section that I said, well, you might not acquire as much language doing these hacks, but uh, you're gonna get a higher score. So the first hack is that the order of the question corresponds to the order of the reading. And we're gonna see that with an example just after this. What does that mean? Question number one, let me see if I can Let's say this is the text. You normally get about three paragraphs. And then you have here your questions. Question number one, question number two, question number three, number four. Well, question number one, you will probably find it right here. Question number two, right here. Question number three, if it's not right here, well, it's probably right here. And so on, four right here. So it goes in the same rate as the reading goes. The questions um, match in order, all right? Um, we also have uh, so most of the questions are circled. What does circle means? Well, let me go back here. A circle question says first you have a statement. Let's say the man is in the room. That's the statement. Then the question is, where is the man? We call that circle because, well, uh, the question it's it itself given you the answer that you need to complete by giving just a circle to the statement. Well, the man is in the room. Those type of questions, you're going to find them as you're starting the test so they are low in complexity if you get those right then you're gonna get questions that are high in complexity and those questions require perspective so what is that you need perspective um, in the case imagine if the question said um, hello I am writing right now from my hotel which is very close to the bridge of the um, of the square that's nearby. It is also a square that passes through a a river, but this river finishes on this limit. So right there, you got this statement, and the question might be, "Where is the hotel?" And the options will be like, "It's close to the river. It's close to the bridge." or uh, close to the, um, the city center, let's say. It's just an example. So in that case, the statement itself doesn't give you exactly the, uh, the wording of the answer. And that's why you need to have some perspective on, on those questions that require more, more complexity. The septo hack for this is just immerse yourself. And the way you practice immersion is by reading and novels. So let's practice. I have this link right here. Let me copy it.
and it's from the IELTS. Oh, you know also which one is a very good book uh, to read? Uh, Tom Sawyer. Um, it's one of the classics. It's actually book a book for um, teenagers. So it's not very hard to read, and it's quite fun. Tom Sawyer. All right. So uh, this is a sample test, the kind of that you will get in the sub 2 exam you get one paragraph so it says before looking okay so according to our hacks is uh first we have the paragraph and then we have the question so the first thing that we need to do is look at the question because from the question we know that if it's a circle question we know that the a paragraph itself is going to give us the answer. Okay, give me one second because I got someone writing. It's not here. No. No, no. Yeah. So we got the uh, paragraph. And first, we need to look at the uh, Question. Wait, someone's writing. Okay, it's not here. If if for some reason you guys have a question, please unmute yourselves and tell me so that I don't have to come back here. This is the paragraph, all right? Australian agricultural innovations. So what do we have uh, for a question? What is dry farming? We have preserving nutrients and moisture plowing the land again and again, cultivating fallow land. We know that uh, we need to look for this um, in our paragraph, dry farming, dry farming. So we're going to keep a very good eye on this uh, reading. So Australian agriculture and innovation. During this period, there was a widespread expansion of agriculture in Australia. The section system was begun whereby small sections of land were parceled out by a lot, by lot. Particularly in North South Wales, this led to conflicts between smallholders and the emerging squatter classes, whose abuse of the system often allowed them to take vast tracts of fertile land. There uh, were also many positive advances in farming technology as the farmers adapted agricultural methods to the harsh of the Australian conditions. One of the most important was dry farming. All right. This is the first encounter that I get from that question. So I know that the answer is either right here starting the paragraph or after the war itself. This was the discovery that repeated plowing of fallow. Plowing, we got another um, word that was within the options of the question or follow unproductive land could preserve nitrates and moisture allowing the land to eventually be cultivated this along with the extension of the railways allowed the development of what are now great inland with islands so to answer this question you should have highlighted the wall dry farming what is highlighting no, it is not necessarily doing this but it's just keeping an eye that right there we, we're going to have the um, the answer. Now let's look at the question. Remember that we uh, took a quick look before uh, immersing ourselves into the paragraphs. So what is dry farming? Preserving nutrients and moisture, plowing the land again and again, cultivating fallow land. So for this, uh, Dania, which one do you think is the answer? B. Plowing the land again and again. And why is that? 
uh, because that's the action that you need to do in order to make the land fertile. Like it is not going to preserve the nitrates and the moisture just by itself. You have to do an action before that. Exactly. And how do you came up to that conclusion uh, in, in terms of, well, it was just after the word or I just got that repeated. It's a very similar word. What did you find it, about it? Because they, they gave us the explanation that unreproductive land could preserve nitrates and moisture. And this is usually used as a distraction in a text. Exactly. So right here, we're not talking about a circ circling question but as a um, word of perspective. This one requires perspective. So it's wording the same as uh, plowing the line again and again, but just as, a, look, this was the discovery that we pretty plowing a follow. So it's just the same wording, but uh, with different semantics. All right, now right here, I have the full text, uh, which is, one, two, three, and um, five paragraphs. And we have um, five questions. Remember that in order to have good answers, let me go back to the presentation. The order of the questions are, are gonna correspond to the order of the reading. So I'm gonna pass you girls the link and please uh, do this test. All right, now uh, you don't have to get the answer, the answers exactly as they are um, suggested or proposed. You don't have to have a high score right here. What I want you to get from this is to get a feeling of the step to exam on, and the way the answers are presented according to the reading. All right. Now for this, I'm going to give you girls 15 minutes. Starting right now. So, um, I'm going to mute myself. But I'm going to be here if you have questions, please let me know in 15 minutes, please.
Okay, I got a screenshot from Diana. Great. Now, uh, Daniel, please let me know when you finish so we don't distract you. Great, eighty percent. So, uh, th those are very good scores. Now, um, uh, I want you guys to tell me what did you find about not the answers itself. I don't want to talk about the vocabulary, but the structure that were the paragraph was presented in, and also corresponding to the question. So, Diana. Please tell, 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 tell me about that and talk me a little bit about that. Um, I think every question had uh, a keyword. Hmm. So I, I try to, to find the keyword in the, in the text mm -hmm. and relate the information. With the, with the question, because sometimes it's a little confused. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two options very similar. And what about the circling questions? Did you find that most of the answers corresponded exactly as they were presented in the paragraph or that you needed to change the wording? Sometimes change the words. Okay, that's great. Yes. And synonyms or, or some similar sense? Uh, this attempt where you got 100%, that was your first attempt, right? Yes. Wow, that was great. And now, Daniel, how about you? What can you tell me about uh, recognizing the type of this test? There are a lot of noise. Oh, don't worry. I understand that. Yeah, it's better if you write. So Danny is writing. I don't know if I should open my microphone. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, I tried to change the wording. Okay. To match it with the options yeah well you know um, this is something that I got from this test and it's my own uh, reflection of this exercise it was just sent by the leader of the online language community and is that it is not uh, a circle circle type of ty test whereby you find that most of the questions correspond exactly as the wording is in the paragraph. So we're talking about questions that are uh, more complex and require us some kind of immersion. Uh, I also have another key right here and is that, uh, let me go back, I'm not sure in my screen. Usually text on certification need deductions or implications. Yes, that's true. And when it comes to the septo, those usually go if you answer correctly the first questions. But that's true. Let me share my screen again. Uh, okay, I got it. So in the case of... Sorry, I have to go right now. Thank you for your class. I mm -hmm. hope um, to be in the next opportunity with you. That's not a problem. All right. Thank you for coming here. <laughs> Thank Goodbye, you. Diana. Bye. Goodbye. Okay, Dan Danny. So, uh, the way we see this uh, these questions is because, as Diana said, there were some 
keywords and most of them correspond to the well, for example right here we have um what did mckay do so we need to look for mckay now let's approach the end of this lesson and is that uh, it's the same as the beginning of this lesson well if you want to get a high score in the septo stop doing uh, these types of um, practice that I just sent you the type of practice yes it helps us to recognize the structure of the exam and it allows us to, to know that well we will probably gonna be asked about deductions about uh, the change of wording and most likely circling questions if we're starting uh, the exam however as I just said uh, if you really really want to get a high score just by reading a novel you're gonna be fine so uh, that's it I wonder if you have more questions about that I'm gonna send you the the emails right now mm, not really like I just wanted to to have this septo class because like the only certification I have ever come in contact with is TOEFL mm. and I was teaching TOEFL to one of my students and then we realized like just this week that she wasn't going to be able to present the TOEFL because where she is located there are no like locations nearby and she would need it to travel like really long distances in order to do the, the exam so we settled for IELTS mm. and that made me think like okay I maybe should get like more knowledge about other kinds of certifications in case that other options are needed all right well thank you for coming um I, right now I'm, I'm looking for the email but I, I'm just gonna take some of your time so after we finished I'm gonna look for that and write you the email so you can do it I, I suggest you do it is you're not gonna waste anything by just taking that test and you're probably gonna get uh, homologated I don't know if that works correct <laughs> me neither to be honest I don't know if that <laughs> word is, is correct yeah, because right now I'm doing like English one. Mm -hmm. And the, the only reason why I didn't have the opportunity to like skip the levels was because the, um, how do you say that? Like the date that expires was really close and it wasn't going to be enough time for the people that makes the study of the case uh, like long enough okay because they needed like two weeks to, to examine like everything I, and, and come to a decision and the day of expiration was really really close about the TOEFL right yeah I will, because I had my my TOEFL certification valid but now it, it expired and when did you take it I took it in 2018. Mm. 2018, yeah. Yeah. Well, right now they're offering uh, to take this test online and it's cheaper. I think it's uh, 150 mil pesos, if I'm not wrong. But you said that for us it's free, right? Uh, no, the, the TOEFL is always paid. The SEPTO is oh, free. Well. I was thinking about the septo, sorry. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. So, Dania, it was a pleasure. Thank you for being here. Can you please send me the, the information of my career leader? Or? Yes, I'm going to send you that after we finish this call. Okay. So I don't have to, to, to look at while, while you're here. But I'm going to send it right now, right? Very good. Thank you very much. Have a good All day. Right. You too. Bye-bye.